from people. No social gatherings of more than 10 people. Use drive through as the president discussed with leaders in the industry today, and every American, especially practicing common sense and good hygiene. For the American people uh, as a whole, the risk of serious illness remains low, but we're asking every American to partner with us in this effort to slow the spread of the virus and especially to be mindful of seniors or others with serious underlying health conditions for whom the threat of the coronavirus can be very significant and very real. Uh, as I said, the President has continued to push our task force to bring a whole of government, a whole of America approach, and we continue to be inspired the way our nation's governors and nation's businesses are responding. We spoke just yesterday with the leaders of every broadcast network in America that will soon be unveiling a public service campaign using CDC guidelines. And specifically, as we work on the issue of supplies, uh, were meetings yesterday with Department of Defense officials about excess supplies. The President and I will be meeting today to speak about the supply chain for hospitals. We would make one specific request, and that is we would urge construction companies to donate their inventory of N95 masks to your local hospital and forego additional orders of those industrial masks. Because of what the President asked to be included in legislation moving through the Congress today, those industrial masks that they use on construction sites are perfectly acceptable for health care workers to be protected from a respiratory disease. But we're asking construction companies that our President knows very well from his background, we're asking them to donate their N95 masks to their local hospitals and also forego making additional orders. That's the President's direction. We will, uh, we will continue to do whatever it takes. We'll continue to marshal the best of the American people, uh, the best of all the people behind me, the people behind them, our state and local officials, uh, and uh, we will get through this, and we will get through this together. Thank you, Mr. Thank President. You. Thank you. I want to thank Chad Wolf and Homeland Security. The job they did at the airports was really incredible. They screened uh, thousands and thousands of people. Uh, O'Hare got backed up a uh, little bit, but uh, uh, they got them out. And the, but everybody was screened and screened very carefully. They didn't want to rush it. I think it was 13 airports, and uh, it was it was an incredible thing. Then they had a big surge also from uh, the UK and Ireland, and uh, that went very smoothly. But they did a fantastic job. They worked long hours, and they did a fantastic job. Uh, I'd like to introduce Steve Mnuchin, and then I'm going to ask Steve to leave because uh, he's going to the Hill. Uh, he's been working very hard with the Senate and with actually with the House on a very very uh, big bold package. It's going to be big and it's going to be bold. And the uh, level, again, of enthusiasm to get something done, uh, I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like it. So, uh, Steve Mnuchin, please. Th thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to announce some very significant actions that the President has approved today. The first I would say is earlier today, I sent a letter to Fed Chairman Powell approving his request to use 13.3. And what that will do is uh, the Fed will be setting up a special purpose vehicle, which the Treasury will invest $10 billion in from one of our funds. That will enable the Fed to guarantee the purchase of A1 P1 commercial paper going forward. That is a $1 trillion market and is critical to American workers. It's critical to American business. And it's in critical to American savers who have a lot of that money in money market funds. So we heard loud and clear there were liquidity issues. This is very significant and will create, uh, I don't think we'll need to use it all, but we have the ability to have the Fed purchase up to $1 trillion of commercial paper as needed. That has already created significant stability in the market today. The second thing I would say is, you know, we previously talked about uh, deferring IRS payments. The President earlier this morning uh, authorized me to announce this program. I have previously announced we would defer $200 billion. The President suggested we increase that to $300 billion, which we'll be, we will be doing. Now, let me just be clear on the specifics. We encourage those Americans who can file their taxes to continue to file their taxes on April 15th because for many Americans, you will get tax refunds, and we don't want you to lose out on those tax refunds. We want you to make sure you get them. 
Many people do this electronically, which is easy for them and easy for the IRS. Uh, if you owe a payment to the IRS, you can defer up to a million dollars as an individual. And the reason why we're doing a million dollars is that covers lots of pass-throughs and small businesses and $10 million to corporations, interest-free and penalty-free for 90 days. All you have to do is file your taxes, you'll automatically uh, not get charged interest and penalties. Now, of course, any American has the right to extend their taxes. We're not taking that a right, but the President has asked us to go up to $300 billion. That's also an enormous amount of liquidity in the system. Uh, the third thing is the President and I worked on a very significant economic stimulus plan. Thank you for being available last night and throughout this morning, and I will be presenting that to the Republicans in the Senate this morning and uh, also discussing that with the House. Uh, we look forward to having bipartisan support. We're now working with the Senate to pass this legislation very quickly, and these will be payments to small businesses. Uh, we've talked about loan guarantees so to critical industries such as airlines and hotels, and we've also talked about a stimulus package to the American worker uh, you can think of this as something like business interruption payments for the American workers. Thank you. Do you have any questions for the Secretary of the Treasury? When you say a stimulus package for American workers, do you mean direct payments to Americans, or are you talking about a payroll tax holiday? Um, although the President likes the idea of the payroll tax holiday, I will tell you what we've heard from many people, and the President has said we can consider this. The payroll tax holiday would get people money over the next six to eight months. We're looking at sending checks to Americans immediately. And what we've heard from hardworking Americans, many companies have now shut down, whether it's bars or restaurants. Americans need cash now, and the President wants to get cash now. And I mean now in the next two weeks. How much? Uh, I will be previewing that with the Republicans. There's some numbers out there. They may be a little bit bigger than what's in the press. Go ahead, please. Please, wait. Please. Uh, what help are you going to give to airlines specifically? We've, I've had discussions with all the airline CEOs this week. Um, the airline CEOs have had conversations with the Senate and the House. As the President said, I was up with a subset of the Republican senators last night. I've discussed that with them. I think, as you know, this is worse than 9-11. For the airline industry, this is uh, – they, they are almost ground to a halt. The President wants to make sure that although – we don't want people to travel unless it's critical. We want to maintain for critical travel the right to have domestic hey, travel. Billion dollars. Is that I'm not going to comment on the specifics. I will tell you we're very focused. There's a lot of workers. This is strategically important to us, and we'll be working with Congress on this. The airline industry will be in good shape. Yeah, go ahead, please. Uh, there's been talk about $1,000 checks to every American, increasing support among Republicans and some Democrats for that. Would you support that going to everyone, or would you support some sort of income restriction on who gets a check? Well, I think it's clear. We don't need to send people who make a million dollars a year checks, okay? But uh, we like – that's one of the ideas we like. Uh, we're going to preview that today, and then we'll be talking about details afterwards. Well, I think, I think we're going to do something that gets money to them as quickly as possible. Uh, that may not be an accurate way of doing it, because obviously some people shouldn't be getting checks for $1,000. and. Uh, We'll have a pretty good idea by the end of the day what we're going to be doing. Mr. Secretary, Mr. Secretary, Mr. Secretary, Mr. Secretary. Yeah, can you tell how, how would the mechanics of this work? I mean, we've been talking about a payroll tax holiday. Uh, some five hundred billion dollars worth was floated to me today. But so, how would this idea of, of sending people to check work? Would you would that be sort of an advance on what they would pay in payroll taxes? Uh, again, uh, we want to make sure Americans get money in their pockets quickly. We want to make sure small business owners have access to funds. We want to make sure that hotels, airlines, we have an entire package. We'll be laying out those details later today. Uh, yeah, I have to say this. There are four different ways you can do it. That's okay. Four – you can hear me well enough, I imagine. Thank you, Mr. Sorry. Okay. Uh, oh, people at home, you're right. Those are very important people, come to think of it, especially your people. Uh, Look, we have four or five ways we can do it, four ways in particular. I think there's a fifth possibility, but there are some very good ways of uh, getting the money out and getting it out quickly. Uh, payroll tax is one way, but it does come over a period of 
months, many months, and we want to do something much faster than that. So I think we have ways of getting money out pretty quickly and very accurately. Okay? Thank you, Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Can you yes. talk about the timeline, please? How quickly do you think you can get this done? The, the, pre the president has instructed me support. we have to do this now. So this is now. By the we, end of the week? Uh, we are going to work with the Senate, who's in session right now, actively. Uh, we will continue to have conversations with the House. I've already spoken to Speaker Pelosi once today. This is stuff that needs to be done now. The President has instructed me that this is no fault to American workers. For medical reasons, we are shutting down parts of this economy, and we're going to use all the tools we have, as I've said, and what tools we don't have, we're going back to Congress. I, I got to go back to... Uh, billion dollars to those who might be concerned that's too expensive. We don't want to talk about it, but it's a substantial number. We're going big. The expression, we could do it two ways. We could keep going back every day or every week. Uh, we're going big. And uh, that's where uh, Mitch McConnell, that's the way he wants to go. That's the way I want to go. I think we want to get it done and uh, have a big infusion as opposed to going through little uh, meetings every, every couple of days. We don't want to do it that way. We want to go big, go solid. The country is very strong. We've never been so strong, and uh, that's what we're going to be doing. We don't want uh, with this invisible enemy. We don't want airlines going out of business. We don't want people losing their jobs or not having money to live when they were doing very well just four weeks ago. So we're going big, and that's the way it'll be, and that's the way everybody seems to like it on the Hill. Any other questions for Steve? Sorry, in addition to airlines and hotels, um, you had a call with restaurants today. Was any type of emergency <clears throat> assistance discussed on that call? A lot of restaurants have to close. Even if they are doing delivery, they're not making as much money as they would with a full house. Well, let me make two comments on, on the restaurants, and uh, the President understands this. Th this was emphasized this morning. First of all, we want to make sure that the states allow the drive-through portion of these fast foods to stay open particularly in a time period where we're telling people don't go to restaurants. These companies feed a big part of America, and I expect they're going to feed a bigger part of America. The second thing they asked me to emphasize, I wasn't going to do it now, but as long as you asked, many of these companies have apps. You can order ahead of time. That way when you get there, it's as simple as they'll have it packed. They can give it to you with social distancing and it'll be very fast. So we expect that they will be able to feed a large part of the population. Um, and in regards to support, I will say a lot of these businesses are small businesses, are companies, franchisees, 500 or less, and we have a specific program we'll be unveiling that uh, helps all businesses, small and medium-sized businesses of 500 and less. Secretary, Secretary. Secretary. question regarding uh, Marriott Corporation. It announced that it is furloughing thousands of individuals because of the impacts of the uh, coronavirus. Will your legislation help those individuals? I, I hope so. That's one of the reasons why we got to act very quickly, because we understand whether it's the airlines, hotels, for good reasons to protect the United States on medical issues. Uh, these businesses are shut down, and the President wants to make sure, as I've said, we will use all the powers we have. You saw this today, trillion dollars of potential liquidity into the market, and the powers we don't have, we're going to Congress. And I will say there's a lot of bipartisan support for these issues. So I, I'm going to apologize because I have to go deal with some other things, if that's okay, Mr. President. Thanks, sir. Oh, yeah. I, I, this, I, I do want to comment on this, okay? Um, we absolutely believe in keeping the markets open, okay? Americans need to know they have access to their money. Uh, after September 11th, the only reason why the markets were closed was because the technology was disrupted. I've been on the phone with the major banks, with the New York Stock Exchange. Everybody wants to keep it open. We may get to a point where we shorten the hours, if that's something they need to do, but Americans should know that we are going to do everything to make sure that they have access to their money at their banks, to the money in their 401ks, and to the money in, in stocks. So I want to just be very clear, uh, we intend to keep the markets open. And the banks are record-setting strong, so we have, uh, we have that, which is a much different event than what we had uh, not so long ago. John, go ahead. Mr. President, you mentioned the Army Corps of Engineers. Right. Uh, that you've had a conversation with Governor Cuomo. Right. He believes that New York is going to run out of hospital beds. Are you prepared to mobilize the well, Army we've Corps been asked to, to increase we're, capacity? Yes, we're starting to. We're starting the process, and it's a process. We hope it's not going to be necessary, but it could be necessary. 
the state is working on it very hard themselves, but we'll probably supplement what they're doing. And, and given, given that many of the precursors for our pharmaceuticals come from China, and there have been, uh, there have been supply disruptions, uh, that supply chain has been broken to some degree. Do you expect that we could run into a shortage of prescription drugs? No, I don't see that at all. And I think China has every uh, uh, incentive to make sure that things work well. Uh, China wants to make sure that things work very well. They have every incentive to do so. John? Mr. President, the governor of Ohio has called off the election that was supposed to happen today, the primary election. Do you agree with that decision? And what steps are you taking to ensure that elections going forward, if this pandemic uh, continues, that elections will be able to happen, including, of course, the big one in the fall. Well, the governor of Ohio is doing a great job. Uh, he called that off, and uh, we'll see what happens. There's a court case, and it hasn't been fully determined yet. Uh, but if he called it off, I could understand that, because, you know, he, he's definitely somebody that knows what he's doing. We'll be seeing what very soon. Uh, you know, they're going by the rule of 10 as opposed to 50, and that's pretty tough. Uh, I would say probably you could violate that if you wanted to for an election. I just think an election is a very special thing. He's going to choose — he chose a different date, I think a date sometime in June. But uh, that would be a decision that would be made by him. He felt it was necessary. Uh, the courts are — somebody's challenging it, so the courts will ultimately decide. But what are you doing to ensure that further elections — if, if we're still in this situation a month from now, two months from yeah. now uh, — you what I'm doing, yeah, what, do. I, what I'm doing, John, is very simple. We're getting rid of this virus. That's what we're doing. That's the best thing we can do. By the way, for the markets, for everything, it's very simple, very simple solution. We want to get rid of it. We want to have very — as few deaths as possible. This is a horrible thing. You look at what's going on with Italy. We don't want to be in a position like that, but a much larger — because we're a much larger country. We don't want to be there. And uh, I think we've done really well. I think we've done well. I think the states have done well. We're all working together. The best thing we can do is get rid of the virus. Once that's gone, it's going to pop back like nobody's ever seen before. That's my opinion. But I think it'll pop back like nobody's ever seen before. Please. Just to follow up on John's question, specifically how many new hospital facilities could the Army Corps of Engineers build? And also, what specific measures are you taking to try to increase the number of ventilators in the stockpile? Right. We've ordered uh, massive numbers of uh, ventilators. We have, by any normal standards. We have a lot of respirators, ma uh, ventilators. We have tremendous amounts of equipment. But compared to what we're talking about here, this has never been done before. Uh, and yesterday, I gave the governors the right to go order directly if they want, if they feel they can do it faster than going through the federal uh, government. Now, we've knocked out all of the bureaucracy. It's very direct, but it's still always faster to order directly. And I gave them. That was totally misinterpreted by the New York Times on purpose, unfortunately. But the — the but it's, it's very important. Yes, Mike? I could uh, amplify. Yeah, please. The President directed us to work uh, with the Department of Defense. There's two ways that DOD can be helpful in terms of expanding medical capacity. Um, I know the Governor of New York has asked us to look at the Army Corps of Engineers, which could perhaps renovate existing buildings. But the President also has us inventorying um, what you all would understand as field hospitals or MASH hospitals that can be deployed very quickly. We spoke with uh, Governor Inslee yesterday in Washington State. Uh, we have resources uh, in that part of the country that we could move. And as governors make these requests, uh, we will process them, bring them to the president. But there are two different lanes that DOD can provide, in addition to many medical supplies to augment our national reserves. And the president has tasked us to, uh, to evaluate, make available, and to consider every, every request from governors for either field hospitals, expanding facilities, or the Army Corps of Engineers that could retrofit existing buildings? The Army Corps is very uh, prepared to do, as we say, and we're looking at where it's going. But uh, — and they do call them MASH hospitals, but the field hospitals go up very quickly. Uh, they're uh, — we have them. We have all of this equipment in stock. And we're looking at different sites in a few different locations. And we're not going to need them in West Virginia, where so far I guess they have none. Still none? Still none, right? West Virginia. Big Jim, the governor's — he must be doing a good job. Or is that just reported? That's what's reported. No, they, no, but is that a reporting issue, or is that that they have no cases? Well, that's all that — I just see West Virginia is the only one that has no cases. So obviously that's being treated differently than in New York or, or California different parts of California. I, I do say this, though. The, the Army Corps of Engineers is 
uh, ready, willing, and able. Uh, we have to give them the go-ahead if we find that it's going to be necessary. We think we can have uh, quite a few units up very rapidly. Uh, I'm going to work with uh, Governor Cuomo. I'm going to work with uh, a number of the governors. Governor Newsom has been very generous in his, uh, in his words, and I'm being generous to him, too, because we're all working together very well. And, and uh, I think a lot, of, a lot of very positive things have taken place. Uh, we're talking to California about different sites, but we can, we can have a lot of units up fairly quickly if we think we need them. I think what I'll do is I, I might ask Seema to say a few words on the telehealth, and then we can get back to this, please. Seema? Thank you, Mr. President. And as the President announced earlier, we are doing a dramatic expansion of what's known as telehealth for our 62 million Medicare beneficiaries who are amongst the most vulnerable to the coronavirus. And we're acting in accord with the appropriations bill that was signed on March 6th, as well as the President's emergency declaration last week. And this action is a part of our broader effort to ensure that government requirements, rules, and regulations don't get in the way of patient care during an emergency. And today's announcement builds on the significant progress that the President has already made over the past three years around telehealth services. And while we have allowed for virtual check-ins, full telehealth benefits have been restricted to those living in rural areas, established patients, and just for those brief visits. But no longer, Medicare beneficiaries across the nation, no matter where they live, will now be able to receive a wide range of services via telehealth without ever having to leave home. And these services can also be provided in a variety of settings, including nursing homes, hospital outpatient departments, and more. And thanks to the leadership of HHS, we'll also be temporarily relaxing certain HIPAA requirements so that doctors can provide telehealth with their own phones, and we'll be using enforcement discretion when it comes to collecting copays so that cost won't be a barrier. This is a part of our larger efforts around mitigation, and as we are encouraging Americans to stay home whenever possible, we don't want our Medicare policies getting in the way. And so consider the implications of this. Perhaps an elderly patient with diabetes needs a routine checkup, and this has nothing to do with the coronavirus. And so with our new telehealth benefits, this person who's not really, uh, who's at risk for the coronavirus doesn't have to venture outside their home. They can talk to their doctor via Skype, and they don't have to risk exposure to the virus, and they can receive that care from the safety of their own home. It could be another Medicare recipient who's experiencing mild flu-like symptoms, and instead of leaving the house and sitting in a waiting room full of other vulnerable people, they can also receive advice uh, from their doctor from their home. And this shift is very important for clinicians and providers who over the coming weeks will face considerable strain on their time and resources. And now Medicare patients who don't absolutely need to come in to an office won't have to, and this allows the healthcare system to prioritize for care for those that are more, in, that have more needs or in dire need and preserves protective equipment as well. Um, state Medicaid agencies can also provide telehealth services without federal approval, and so we're asking all states to make this available as well. And we've also asked private insurance companies to expand their telehealth benefits and make it clear to their providers and, the, and their members what they cover. As our nation seeks to balance the twin imperatives of getting Americans the care that they need during this outbreak and limiting the spread of the virus, the impact of this historic action simply cannot be overstated. In an emergency, those on the front line shouldn't have to worry about federal rules and red tape, hamstringing them when they need flexibility above all else. And we're doing everything in our power to make sure that that doesn't happen. I also just want to briefly mention that because of the President's emergency declaration, we do have the ability to provide a lot of Medicaid waivers, and Florida was the first state to be approved. We were able to do that in a matter of days. Thank you. Any, any questions, yeah. please? Where, where do you see your citizens go for instructions on how to do the telehealth? They should call their doctor's office, and their doctor's office can tell them how to do that. Um, also, you know, there may be some of our uh, Medicare members that may not have access to equipment, so we're asking family members but to help with this, but also respecting the requirements around social distancing, and if any of those family members or neighbors have symptoms, they should obviously stay Will away. Will you be posting numbers also? That's correct, That might exactly. be the easiest way to do it. Yes. If you post uh, in ads, if you post some numbers. And they can also call our 1-800-MEDICARE number, and they can also get information. Those phone lines are open. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Admiral, if you'd say a few words about where we're going, and then I'd like to ask Dr. Burks to say a couple of words about how, uh, how the system is working. Well, thank you very much. Um, as we talked about earlier this week, uh, the commercial system is rapidly uh, advancing in the testing capabilities. Um, as of today, our public health laboratories, meaning the CDC and the public health labs, have reported out 31,878 tests, so almost 32,000 tests. The clinical laboratories, the Association of Clinical Laboratories, um, have reported out 20, about 27,000 tests. And most importantly, of those 27,000 during the cumulative period of time, 8,200 of them were yesterday. This is showing the dramatic ramp as the high throughput comes in. We don't have the numbers this morning from the American Hospital Association, which means all the individual hospital laboratories. We will have that upcoming in the next day or so. And then Ambassador Burks will have this whole process uh, uh, fixed under with the legislation that everything will roll up into a common reporting probably by the end of next week. In terms of our drive through laboratories, again, these are blossoming all over the country uh, by individual states. The ones that we are heavily involved in and really pushing equipment to, we expect over the next few days to begin setting up 47 of these in approximately 12 states. Um, the material is already palletized and being shipped uh, to the locations. Most cities have the specific locations. Some do not, but it's still going to a central receiving. And we know that we'll be uh, deploying at least 140 Commission Corps officers. Uh, about half of the sites have reported their requirements. About 140 officers will be going. We expect that to go up. So this is going on uh, the way we expected. We did a trial site yesterday with a full mobile unit for drive through uh, with full PPE. Uh, we had a lot of kinks in the system, as you can expect. That's why we do uh, a, a test before we go out into the field. Uh, don't expect these to be 100% perfect the moment they come. They're going to be adapted to the state and the local situation, but we're very confident that these will add testing to the already very robust healthcare system and commercial system. Thank you, Mr. Thank President. You very much. Thank you, Abel. And this has never been done before.